In this video, we're going to take a look at conditionally formatting word art with VBA. In the last video, we took a look at conditionally formatting the word art using normal Excel features. And because we don't have so much control over word art without VBA, what I did was to replace that line in the percentage sign with an in-bar chart. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can conditionally format now the entire word art to show the percentage completion so that you can visualize how much percentage of your work or your project has been completed. So if you have 20%, it's going to look like this. And if you have 80%, it's going to look like this. In this cell, we're going to be inputting the percentage. So let's insert the word art that's going to be connected to this cell. So immediately go to the formula box, type in equals. I'm going to select A4. Now I have a connection between the cell and my word art. So let's just make this bigger. Okay, that's better. When I saw this question on the Excel forum, I thought it's great for two reasons. One is that I hardly ever use word art in Excel. So I thought it's going to be fun trying to solve this. And two is that I thought this would make a good video to show you the methods that I use to find out the right VBA syntax for things that I don't use that often. So in this case, to control the fill color of word art. A lot of people think that learning VBA involves learning a lot of syntax and a lot of code, but it's not about that at all. It's about understanding the core concept of VBA which is basically how VBA thinks in terms of objects, properties, and methods, and how you can use this thinking to manipulate Excel. Once you understand this concept and you have the methods in place of discovering the right syntax, you can pretty much create any type of tool. It's just a matter of knowing how to do the detective work to get there. But before we get there, before we start to use any VBA, we have to figure out how to do this manually. How am I going to be able to highlight 20% of this text? Well, let's take a look at the properties of this object. So I'm going to right mouse click and either format shape, go to size and properties. We just need to bring up this dialog box. Now here we have shape options and text options. So we need text options. Text fill looks really good. That's what we want to control. And gradient fill sounds also good because this is how we can define different colors that can be reflected in this word. We can also define the angle, the position, and so on of the different colors used. So since we just want two colors here, I'm going to go with black and white. We don't need all of these other gradient stops. So I can click on two of them that I don't need and just remove it like this. One of these I'm going to switch to black and the other one I'm going to switch to white. I have to bring them together. See when I'm moving these, do you see this changing? What is that? It's the position. So if I bring it here, that's 35%, I can see this. But does this look to you like 35% of this word? No, because it would be great if these would be identical. All I have to do with VBA then is to change this number, make it basically the same as the number we see here. So maybe I could get that, maybe I could get them to be equal, but maybe I just have to use a different type of text or a different type of text effect or text outline is probably not going to do it, but let me just add an outline to this. It's going to look better if the rest is black. So let's take a look at our text effects. Does shadow do anything here? Yeah, it makes it look different, but it doesn't change the size of this. So I'm going to keep it with the shadow. That's fine. The reflection glow all of these don't seem to be related to that. So let's look at transform. And this looks better. I mean, not that my text looks better, but the coloring, that black part looks better. I see more of it than if I don't have any. If I come to the first one, 
You see how my text now fills up the entire shape? So this does look good. And this does look pretty much like it could be 35%. Now the only thing I want is to get it the other way around. And here under direction, I can switch that. Okay, so let's go to something like 50%. That should be a good indication. Yeah, that looks good. That looks about 50%. So we could use this in our VBA code and have this controlled by this value if we use this type of word art, this type of text effect. If I hold my mouse over this, you see it says stop two of two. And this is stop one of two and we have the position and color of this stop. So if I record this macro and these get picked up, that's great. I just have to take that position command and say, take value from the cell A4. I'm gonna start the macro recorder now and let's see what we get. The only thing I'm gonna do before is just to reset that whole gradient fill. Let's just toggle these around. So I'm just moving these for the purpose of getting this back to what it was, which is this. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna start the macro recorder and just do quickly these steps and let's see how far we can get with the macro recorder. Because sometimes it can be very useful, sometimes it can be quite useless. But nearly all the time, you get really good hint on where you should look to find the rest of the syntax that you need to get this done. I'm gonna click Start Recording, call it Test. Let's click on this. Let's go to Text Fill, Gradient Fill. All I'm gonna do is remove these. Let's also change that text direction. I think it was this one. And one of these is going to be black and the other one is going to be white. And let's just position them. Let's just move them around to see what the macro recorder picks up here. 20%, I think that's it. We're going to click away and stop. The purpose of this is just to find the syntax. Where are we ultimately going to have this macro? We don't want it to run by clicking a button, right? We don't want to be inputting here and then click a button and say run this. What we want to do is that the moment someone changes this number, this is going to change because the macro is going to run. So the trigger is this cell changing. And that means we need to put the final macro on this page. There are special sub procedures that are already available for Excel to work at. So it's going to look if we have put any macro in that sub procedure and if we have, it's going to run it. But before we get to actually typing our final macro, let's go and take a look at what the macro recorder has picked up. So I'm going to press Alt F11 to open the VBA editor. And let's look for our macro, which must be right here. So let's see what it picked up. Well, it has ActiveSheet.Shapes. That's my object called Rectangle 4. Let's just double check. Yeah, that's the right one. Then it went through this hierarchy, this object hierarchy, to find the fill property. Now, the fill property, as we can see here, returns an object that has its own properties. Now, this, this is a core concept of VBA. But whenever you get confused about this topic, just think about a shoe. A shoe can have a heel or it doesn't have a heel. A heel is a property of the shoe, right? But the heel itself is an object. That heel has a certain size. The heel has a certain color or it can be of certain material. Even though the heel is a property of the shoe, it also is an object that has its own properties. So fill right here is the heel. Let's see what type of properties our macro recorder picked up. It picked up the four color and the back color. Now, the way it's picked it up, it's using the theme color. That's the default behavior of the macro recorder. But you might not want it dependent on the user's theme color. You might want to fix the color to be independent of the theme. And that's something we can fix either using a color code or using the RGB code. But that's a simple fix that we can do in our final code. Now this here, 
this two color gradient method. That's something that we can use later. Right here, this was where I was changing the position of the gradient stop, but look what it recorded. It doesn't have the position here. It just put in the same text over and over again. And that's actually something that we really need because we need to control that position based on the number that we input in our cell. But it doesn't matter that the macro recorder didn't pick it up because it's put us on the right path by telling us that all of these properties can be set inside this fill object that we get. So we just need to do some detective work to find what they are. Now before we start with that, I'm just going to copy the part of this code that can come in handy for the final code. So let me bring up the immediate window. Right? So the immediate window is great for executing code, is great for querying code, but it's also great to use it as a notepad. So I'm going to copy and paste this here, but I'm going to comment these out so it doesn't execute anything by putting this single quotation mark. This is the part that we can use later because we know how to refer to our object. And this is a part that can come in handy as well. So I'm going to take this one too. Now let's go to the object library to see what we can find for the fill property. So either click here or click on F2 to get to the object library. I'm just going to type in fill. Let's expand this and let's scroll down because the type of fill member we're looking for needs to somehow belong to a shape, right? So let's see if we find one that's right here. It says property fill as fill format. So let's click on this and see the properties that we get from this fill format object. And look at this, we have the gradient angle. We have the degree, we can get the stops. So angle comes in really handy because let's just go back and see where we can see it here. That's the angle, right? If I change the direction of this, let's say this way, look, my angle changes, right? So to get it the way we want, which is to start from the bottom, the angle has to be 270. The gradient stops are also here and see how it refers to them. It has stop two of two for the second one. And then it has the position and the color. Okay, so let's go back to our object library to see if we can find this in here as well. So gradient angle was something that we're gonna need. I'm gonna control C this and just keep a note of this, that this was 270. Then let's go and check out gradient stops. We're gonna need this too. So I'm gonna control C this as well and paste it here. Now gradient stops sounds like a collection, right? It's a collection of different stops. We can get to them with this item. That was what we saw before, it's a two of two. So we can refer to the second gradient stop by opening the bracket and putting two in there. And to the first gradient stop by opening the bracket and putting one in there. We can see that this collection belongs to the object called gradient stop. And let's see the properties of this. That's our color, that's our position. These are the two things that we need to control. So I'm just gonna add them to this and just put dot position here as well so we don't forget. Okay, so it looks like we have what we need. Let's switch back to code window. Let's press F7 and put in the code in the right place. The right place is in the code window of the sheet because we want that code to run every time the cell value changes, right? So we need to be here. Now we have a choice of which type of event do we need. By default, we get the selection change event. So selection change is basically, whenever I come and click this, whenever I come here, that selection change is running, which is fine. It would work in this case as well, but it's just a bit of an overkill because I don't want it to run every time I click somewhere else. I want it to run every time I change something inside a cell. And there is an event for that and it's called the change event, right? So events is something that I cover in detail as well in its own section of the course. 
and I'll share with you more information when the course is finally out. The good thing about the change event is that it has this argument target as range. So you could get more specific so that the code runs not just when anything changes on the worksheet, but when a specific range changes in that worksheet. And we can use that. We can say if target dot address equals, I'm going to open quotation marks because that's like putting in text here, a4, then let's close with end if. A4 is where we're inputting that number, is right here. Now we need to refer to that object. So this was the part that I copied. Let's copy and paste this here. Now what I don't need here is the active sheet because I am actually on the active sheet. I do need shapes, but I don't need this part. Okay, and I don't need the select. So select is something the macro recorder does, but we don't need to select things to manipulate them. And from here, I need the text frame two. Now text frame two is that frame where we have our text in. If you click on F1 on here, it'll take you to the MSDN help website. We can see that this property is again like the heel, right? That it returns an object. So when we click on this, we can see it's the text frame of a shape. And right here, we can see the different methods and properties that are associated with it. And the one that the macro recorder picked up was the text range property. Right? So if we go back here, we can see what's the text range and then the font property of the text range, which returns an object. And then we got to the fill. So what I'm going to do is put width here and do end width. This line of code from our macro recorder is something we can use right here. Then we said the gradient angle, right? That's something we need as well. But since we're inside that fill property, we need to put our dot first gradient angle. Then we can define the color of our gradient stops. Let's go with the RGB code of black. That's simple, that's zero, zero, and zero. Right, so if you want any specific RGB code, what you can do is to get it from here. So all you have to do is to go to color here, go to more colors, switch to custom, and you see the RGB code. Now for this super light color, our RGB code is 255 for red, green, and blue. Now, in addition to color, we also need the position of this, right? And that's something that we're going to connect to our cell value. So I'm just going to copy this, change this to position, reference this to target.value. And for the second gradient stop, I'm just going to change around the colors and also reference it to the same target value. Okay, so that's it. Let's just double check if this works. I'm going to change this to 30. It looks good. 60, 100. It looks great. Now, just to make sure that we don't run into a problem in case someone inputs text here, what we can do is to check if the value in there is numeric. So we can add if is numeric and say target.value, then it should run this. Otherwise, it shouldn't. I'm just going to say end if this is for is numeric part and just push these ones in. Okay, so let's go back and check. If I put some text in there, okay, it just says Layla, but it doesn't give me any error. Now, if I switch to 50%, I get the macro working. One thing you need to keep in mind is that this runs because that cell value is changed. If this cell was a result of the formula, this specific event is not going to run. You're going to need to use a separate event, and that's the calculate event. There you don't have the target as an argument, but you can define the range. And then to make sure that your code only runs when that specific range is changed, you can use the intersect method. And this is something that I also cover in detail in the course. Feel free to download this workbook 
from the link provided in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, why not subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when new videos come out.